Hi, this is Miss Litton, and this is a wonderful rainy Friday afternoon with my AP Bio Period 3 class. Say hi. Hi. And we are going to discuss the parts of Chapter 32 that you did not do already as an, as an Ed Puzzle. As I'm working my way through the, the parts you did already um, that I had you do online, um, if there's something you want me to go over, I'll stop and go over that with you. Okay? So be looking through your notes that you invested in, um, and let me know if there's a part there that you um, think is weak. Because starting right here, all of this was all done already online. Yes, okay. So let me back up on this part a little bit, okay? We have not discussed development yet, but I'm gonna take you down um, the development pathway. Here comes Mr. Happy Sperm, okay? He's gonna fertilize an egg. When the sperm fertilizes the egg, it forms a diploid zygote. It does cleavage, 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 which is repetitive mitosis and it forms a solid ball of cells called a marula, okay? That marula, okay, the solid ball of cells, that pumps salt into the middle, who always follows salt? Water. Water, and it blows it up like a rubber balloon, okay? Rubber balloon, water balloon, okay? Um, and this is called a blastula, the cavity inside is called a blastocil, okay? This is just like a hollow ball of cells. Then it starts to fold in on itself. I think of it, if this were a ball, you let out the gas, and you form a gastrula, which is a layered ball of cells. If you think about those red rubber playground balls that you used to have, like, okay, I don't know if you had anybody where they let the air out of it and they wore it like a hat. <laughs> you had those friends, okay? Um, <laughs> she looks over here, okay. <laughs> no. So you let the gas out, this forms a gastrula. It's a layered ball of cells. Originally, you only have two layers. You have an outermost layer called a X. Ectoderm and an innermost layer called a endoderm. Okay. Now, a middle layer will develop. It depends on animals are um, grouped developmentally, whether they're protostomes or deuterostomes. It's kind of like the pathway they take in development. But um, what happens is when it folds in like itself on this, um, this cavity, this new cavity is called the archenteron, or, and there's an opening to that, and that opening is called a blastopore. And for animals, that blastopore is either gonna be a mouth and a new anus will develop, or it's gonna be an anus and a new no. mouth. For us, the blastopore becomes our anus. You are sitting on your blastopore currently, okay? Now, that, your anus is connected to your gut tube, right, remember? Right, it's connected to your gut tube. So <laughs> at this point, that the innermost area is the endoderm, the outermost layer is the exoderm, the endoderm is is outlining your gut, okay? Then this middle layer develops, it's called the mesoderm. Ectoderm, then what? Mesoderm, mesoderm and then endoderm. endoderm. They know what all those tissues are gonna be when you're just a little embryo. The ectoderm is going to become, what's the protective stuff on the outside? <coughs> Skin, okay? How do you interact with your environment using your what system? Nervous. nervous skin and nervous system comes from your ectoderm and the lens of your eye okay the innermost layer your endoderm when I went down and shoved that cane down uh, shoved that hose down the throat what two systems could I have run into digestive, digestive or Ex respiratory digestive or respiratory your endoderm becomes that all your other systems <laughs> cardiovascular musculoskeletal you know them all where do you think they come from? Mesoderm. Now, apply that, look at this picture. The red is the ectoderm, the blue is the mesoderm, and the yellow is the endoderm. The gut tube is that yellow. Now, some organisms, like platyhelminthes, flatworms, they're super thin and flat. Their mesoderm is solid. They have organs in their mesoderm, but they don't have like a little pocket. Back to cake. If I sliced them, with a good knife. I could easily just go like this, and all of these organs would be sitting in that body cavity. That's called a coelom, C-O-E-L-O-M, a coelom. Not a coelom, but coelom, okay? Now, platyhelminthes don't have that, okay? But over here, analyta, or segmented worms, and you and I, we have a coelom. It's a body cavity completely lined with mesoderm, and our organs sit in it. Now, think again, outermost layer, Ectoderm. Then you have some mesoderm. mesoderm, which creates a body activity, a body cavity. Then some more mesoderm. So in the middle of our mesoderm, we have this pocket that our organs sit in. The innermost layer is our endoderm, and that's our gut tube. 
We are a tube within a tube body plan. He's a tube with a tube inside of it. You got that? Those are coelomated organisms if you have a tube within a tube. If you have no coelom, you are acoelomated. If you're in between where you have a cavity but it's not completely lined with mesoderm, it's called being pseudocoelomated. So how does this have anything to do with the circulatory system? We have what's called a closed circulatory system. You already know this. All of our blood stays in our blood vessels, okay? If I punch somebody, right, and I can bruise them, is their blood, what will it form? Oh, a bruise. <laughs> okay, but that's not normal, right? That's abnormal. But normally our blood stays always in our blood vessels. When you have an open circulatory system, some of your blood, it's not called blood at that point, it's interstitial fluid, it'll be hemolymph actually, it'll be sometimes in a vessel and sometimes oozing through your body. Where could it ooze through? Your coelom perhaps. Okay, so those are, you can use a coelom in order to transport some of your fluid. So that's why this got brought up now. So a coelom, here's your tube within your tube system. And this is your gut tube, food will be here, your organs sit in here. How do you feel about that? And again, that's, now they don't need this because they have a large gastrovascular cavity, so the outside of their bodies and the inside of their bodies are all getting bathed by the water where they can have their exchange go across. Yes? I have a question about the last picture. What was the line down the middle and the... Oh, don't even worry about that. Okay. Yeah, don't even worry about that. Okay. Here you can see um, planaria, okay? And they just do diffusion across their thin, moist skin. A nematode, what kind of fluid does it use? Yeah, it's selimic fluid, okay? It's actually, a, it has a pseudocelum, but it uses that. It doesn't have a system, it just lets it run through that tube area, the tube, not, the space around its digestive tube, okay? Um, echinoderms have a unique water vascular system. These are all just different strategies, because remember, it, when you're single cell, single cell, you have one cell, all exchange occurs across what? Cell membrane. Cell membrane. We're multicellular, but still, all exchange occurs across our cell, cell membrane. membrane. Our, all of our cells still need to be bathed in what? Fluid, or they're gonna do what? Die, think about your skin cells. They're dead, right? Why? Because they're totally, they're just, I keep making more and pushing cells out and these are just dying out here. That's what dust is, right? It's just dead skin cells. Okay, so we have to keep our cells completely bathed in fluid at all times. Why do we need that fluid? Because that fluid is gonna bring us oxygen and nutrients and we're gonna get rid of carbon dioxide and waste. waste, right? And I can use that fluid to transport hormones. I can use that fluid to transport um, 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 waste, um, vitamins, okay? Um, we'll hit more of that in a minute, okay? This picture, don't let it freak you out, okay? But this is like a kind of cladogram. I annotated a diagram. Um, just tell, showing you how all the different ways you could, you could go about moving fluid around, kind of to give us an overview. Okay, here's your heart and um, your main vessels, which you learned about, and I want to teach you a little song that goes with it. Okay, I need you to make an A and put it over your heart. Remember, your heart is not over here. We always go, I pledge allegiance like this, but that's because our left ventricle is the biggest, strongest part of our heart because it has to contract and push blood to all of our body. So we feel our heart over here, but we really should be going, I pledge allegiance. This is really where your heart sits. I'm just saying, okay? Make an A, put it over your heart. Listen once and then repeat. Arteries go away from your heart. Here we go. Arteries go away from your heart. Flip it up. Veins go toward. Say it. Veins go toward. Put it together. Arteries go away from the heart. Veins go towards. And then it goes in this order. Arteries. Arteries. Arterials. Arterials. Capillaries in the middle. Capillaries in the middle. Venules. Venules. Veins. Veins. Okay, put that together. Arteries. Arterials. Capillaries in the middle. Venules. Veins. Where does 
does all exchange take place? Oh, yeah. Good. Now, notice the definition is arteries go away, veins go toward. Not arteries carry oxygenated and veins carry deoxygenated. That only works with our systemic circuit. Our pulmonary circuit, which is heart, lungs, heart, our arteries carry deoxygenated blood, they go to the lungs, they get some oxygen, and they come back, right? And our veins carry the oxygenated blood. Opposite for the systemic, okay? Now, in your heart, you have atria. Atria, reach up. Atria, atria, collect. Ventricles, pump. Go again. Atria, collect, and ventricles, pump. Atria, collect, and ventricles, pump. Now. Which hand is this on you? Okay, this is the left side of your heart. <laughs> this is the right side of your heart. Okay, if I'm coming up to Max and I am his doctor and I am to amputate his right arm, I don't come up here and go, oh, and left, right, right, okay, okay. <laughs> Oops, it is, it's sorry. <laughs> you have to run out the truck. Okay, now. It is always, if you can remember these three things, arteries go away, veins go towards, and you can remember your lefts and your rights on your labeling, and anything to do with your lungs is pulmonary. Lungs is pulmonary. You remember those three things, it makes this whole system super, super easy. Say this one more time. Arteries go away from the heart, veins go towards. Arteries, arterioles, capillaries in the middle, venules, veins, atria, collect, ventricles, pump. Atria, collect, ventricles, pump. This is my left arm. This is my right arm. These are my lungs. <laughs> okay? And what do I think of when I say lungs? Pulmonary. Okay, I want to show you one more thing. Okay, you already know that. If you look, if you look at a picture of a heart, okay, now I'm gonna cut it in half. <coughs> there are four chambers, here, 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 and here. They have it turned, so this is not showing you the right um, size of all of them. So I'm gonna take those four chambers and put them here, okay? The top ones, do you think they collect or pump? Collect. collect. So what do we call the top one? Atrium. Yeah, this is an atrium. And this is an atrium. Okay, what one is this one? Right. It's my left. What one is this one? Right. right. What is this? Right ventricle. Right ventricle. What is this? Left ventricle, good. There are valves that go between them right here. Do you know what this one is called? Your tricuspid. Do you know what this one is called? Bicuspid. Watch. What did I just spell? Rat. Rat lab. Rat lab. <laughs> See how we do that? Okay. Now, your left ventricle, you know blood isn't red and blood isn't blue. You know that, right? Okay. Your left ventricle, okay, atria collect, ventricles pump. It's going to pump blood. It is oxygenated. Where is it going to send all that blood to? To your body. Do you know the largest artery of your entire body? Aorta. Okay, this right ventricle is pumping deoxygenated blood. Where does it need to go? Lungs. There are two sets of vessels going away. The one on this side would be the left, give me the lung word, pulmonary. I'm going away, artery. The one going this direction would be the right pulmonary artery. The ones coming back would be your lefts and right pulmonary veins. Look right here at this heart. Here is your 
right atrium. What's the name of this valve? Oh, Tricuspid. What would this be? Right ventricle. Right ventricle. Blood's going out and away. What would we call the, these vessels right here? No, no, no. Left pulmonary. Left pulmonary. What? Artery. Okay. And this one would be the right pulmonary artery. Good. When it comes back oxygenated here, what is this structure right here going to be called? Left atrium, left ventricle. What would this be? Left pulmonary vein. And this would be the right pulmonary vein. What's this valve? Bicuspid. This is the left ventricle out the aorta. See how fast you learn the heart? Hey, this divider right here, what do you call the divider in your nose? No, it's, it starts with an S. Septum. 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 This is a septum right here. And then these are the superior and inferior vena cava. We'll go over that next time. I just want you to start looking at it, okay? Easy peasy. Make good choices.